I, I want to use our text this morning to talk about that which is in direct contrast to that great faith that we will need to grow God's church. I have heard it said that the opposite of faith is doubt. And in our text this morning, we have a great illustration of doubt. Uh, this occurrence of doubt comes from an unlikely source, John the Baptist. Look at Jesus' testimony concerning John in Matthew 11 and 11. Uh, when you get home, the scripture records Jesus saying, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, women, there hath not risen a greater one than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. John was not the first man of God to doubt Jesus, nor will he be the last. Somebody say amen. amen. Webster defines doubt as to be uncertain or undecided, having a tendency to disbelief a wavering of opinion, or a lack of trust. Uh, our Christian life is based on faith. Doubt involves thoughts and feelings that are contrary to our faith. You have heard the phrase, beyond the shadow of a doubt? Well, this morning I want to examine what happens when there is a shadow of doubt. I, I, want, I want to use this Matthew's 11th chapter, verses 2 through 6, as our text this morning, and I want to title this morning's sermon, Standing in the Shadow of Doubt. Standing in the Shadow of Doubt. I, I'm inclined, Reverend Maxwell, to believe that there are two groups of people with us this morning. Uh, first group, some who are unbelievers and experience doubt. They are the ones who may doubt the existence of God, the divinity of Christ, the idea of an afterlife, the reality of hell, and other aspects of Christianity. And then the second group, there are some who are believers and periodically experience doubts. Somebody say amen. There are a number of areas in this life in which a Christian may experience doubts. There may be questions in their mind and in their spirit, such as, is the Bible actually 100% accurate? Is Jesus really the only way to heaven? Is there really a place called hell? Do I really possess eternal life? Does God hear me when I pray? If we are honest with ourselves, there are times in life when we feel like God is a million miles away. Uh, I read a very accurate poem by, by a theologian in his seminary, in Dallas Seminary. His, his name was Norman Schrick. He wrote, let me meet you on the mountain, Lord, just once. You won't have to burn a whole bush, just a few smoking branches, and I would surely be like Moses. Let me meet you on the water, Lord, just once. It wouldn't have to be on the White Rock Lake, just a puddle after an annual Dallas rain, and I would surely be like Peter. Let me meet you on the road, Lord, just once. You wouldn't have to blind me on North Central Expressway. Just a few bright lights on my way to the chapel, and I would surely be like Paul. Let me meet you, Lord, just once. Anywhere, anytime. Just meeting you in your word is so hard sometimes. Must I always be like Thomas? Mm. I am not here to attempt to justify or excuse doubt. Doubt can and will bring about many difficulties in our lives. When your life is filled with doubts, you will be less likely to pray, less likely to study, less likely to serve the Lord. When you get to this point, you are on a slippery slope that usually leads to a backslidden condition. If you are struggling with doubt, I have some good news for you. There is still yet hope for you and still yet hope for me. 
the forerunner of Jesus, the great prophet John the Baptist faced doubt just like you and, and just like me. The encouragement comes in the fact that John did not remain in that condition. You may be here this morning and you have lost all hope. You have questions about tomorrow and concerns about yesterday, uncertainties about the here and now. Why am I going through what I'm going through? You, you might as well go ahead and admit it. You and I have some doubts. And your doubts have put you in a place where you don't give all of your time, all of your talents, and all of your tithes. You, you don't commit to anything. You give a little, but not your all. I, I'll do this, but I won't do that because your doubts. Maybe you are ashamed of your doubts and that you have refused to talk to anybody due to embarrassment and you are carrying a heavy burden as a result. The goal of my message this morning is, is to show you that there is yet hope. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm standing in the shadow of doubts. Let's look at the text, look at the text, look at the text. In verses 2 and 3 of this 11th chapter of Matthew, we, we find our first point, the common reality of doubts. For the text says, now, now when John had heard in prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto them, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Uh, we read in Matthews 4 and 12 that John had been cast into prison. By the time we arrive here at Matthew 11, some time has passed, and, and John has some questions and, and some concerns. John's disciples have been going back and forth reporting to John concerning the events that have taken place concerning Jesus' ministry. I would suspect that John was expecting to be released at any time. He, like many others may have expected Jesus to immediately judge Israel and establish his kingdom. John had to be saying to himself, Maxwell, uh, why, why if my Lord and Savior is running about the land, why am I still in prison? Is he really the one? John hears about the reports of what is happening in Jesus' ministry. He hears about the miracles. He hears about the teachings. He hears about the opposition. He hears about the victories and the successes. While all of these things are happening, John is locked up in prison for the cause of Christ. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind that all the while the enemy was whispering deception in John's ear, increasing the doubt, increasing the pain, increasing his insecurity. John was not an ordinary somebody. John was a chosen by God somebody. John had been selected before he was born to be a forerunner to Jesus. Check out Luke 1 and 17. In Luke 1 and 41, it tells us that he leaped in his mother's womb while he was in the presence of Jesus. He came preaching repentance and sins and preparing the way. Luke 1 41 tells us that he published the fact that the Messiah was coming. John 1 and 29 tells us that he vividly proclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God. John 1.32 says, He witnessed the Spirit of God descending from heaven on Jesus, confirming he was the Messiah. John was not a nobody. John was a God called somebody. You, you remember John's reaction when Jesus came to him to be baptized. For the scripture says, John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of you and cometh thou to me? All I'm trying to help you to understand is that if a man who has witnessed all that John had witnessed can doubt, you and I might find ourselves every now and then in situations that will cause us to doubt. John very well might have been saying, if you are the Christ, why have I not been delivered from this jail cell? If, if we are honest, we have found ourselves in similar situations
situations as well. Can I get a witness? I believe, I believe somebody's in the house right now whose body is racked with pain, saying, Lord, I believe in you, and I've seen you work. Why haven't you healed my body yet? Why am I still dealing with conflict in this relationship? Why are my finances still all messed up? Why have I not found Mr. Wright? Why haven't I found my queen, my bride, the love of my life? Why is every day a struggle? Why is it that I do what I ought not to do and I don't do what I'm supposed to do? Why have I picked up a new song and it's titled Trouble in My Way? And I have to cry sometime. And when the trouble really comes, I forget about the next verse that says Jesus will fix it after a while. Uh, trouble will come, and, and when trouble comes, you will have some doubt. Uh, we say, if God is real, why is this happening to me? If Jesus loves me, why do I feel all alone? What have I done to deserve this? Uh, is this reality worth it? Uh, is it real? Uh, we doubt, uh, and when we get in trouble, doubt will come. Do I have a witness? The psalmist, the psalmist said in Psalm 10 and 1, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in my times of trouble? Have you ever been there? Is anybody already there? Life is full of problems that will cause you to doubt. And if I know that you're real with yourself and real with this congregation, you, you can say amen to the doubt. There are some who may doubt their ability even to serve the Lord in the capacity in which they are called. There are some who doubt the effectiveness of their prayers. There are many different areas of our lives that will cause us to doubt every now and then. We can't seem to mention doubt without talking about Brother Thomas. You, you remember Brother Thomas, don't you? John 20 and 25 records that the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see the hands and the nail prints in his hands, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Uh, the fact is that we are all like Thomas at times. If we can't see things, if we don't have some visible manifestation that God is real, then we begin to doubt. Doubt is a far too common reality in the believers of Christ's world. We may not be able to stop it, but we can learn how to properly react when doubt creeps up in your mind. Doubt will not go away because doubt catch it is a weapon of the enemy. I hope you, I hope you got that. If the devil, if the enemy can get us to doubt, he can get us to stop doing. He can get us to stop loving. He can get us to stop serving, stop caring, stop giving, and stop forgiving. Ah. The enemy wants us to doubt, but, but you have to understand that everybody doubts. Every now and then, from the preacher to the pastor, from the president to the pope, regardless of who you are and where you've been, the reality is somewhere in your life that you'll be walking in the shadow of doubt. Number, number one, number one, there's a common reality of doubt. Number two, you can only stand if you know the correct reaction to doubts. Uh, look at the text, verses 4 and 5. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and show John again those things which you did hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. You've got to know how to react when doubt creeps into your mind and to your spirit. Notice that Jesus was not offended. He did not chastise John for asking the question. He simply stated the facts. 
Jesus' reply was all the evidence that John would need. Not only was this a statement of facts, this was a message Jesus knew that John would understand. It was a reference to a portion of the scripture from the Old Testament, Isaiah 35 and 4, that says, Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be open. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame man shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb shout for joy. And in the wilderness shall be water, breaking out and streams of water in the desert. In essence, Jesus' reply to John was just look at all that I've already done. Consider this, when doubts arose in John's heart, he did the right thing. He turned to Jesus for the answers. John's moment of doubt was surely put to rest when he thought back to what he had already witnessed. For God had already done things in John's life. When the seed of doubt is planted in our minds, you must look to the things that Jesus has already done in your life. I wish I had a witness in here. If you're doubting here this morning, think about the time you were sick and he healed you. You were broken and still paid your bills. You are on the verge of losing your mind and he gave you peace of mind. Messed up because you made an unwise decision, but he brought you through in spite of you. You lost your job, but you kept on eating. You kept on loving. When a loved one died, you held your peace in your spirit. When I remember that I could have been dead and gone and he looked beyond my fault and saw my needs and forgave me and blessed me and anointed me and appointed me and used me and lifted me up I give him glory every time the devil said it can't be done I look him in the eye and say yes it can because it ain't me it is Jesus says Doubt will cripple us. Doubt will stop you from coming to church. Doubt will stop you from calling folk. Doubt will stop you from doing what God has called you to do. But just remember where you've been and you can fight it because I thank him because of what he's done. When I flash back how he's opened up doors, when I flash back a year and a half ago, I had my operation. When I flash back what Sister Massey's been through, when I flash back what Joan is going through, when I flash back how he blesses in spite the devil can't put doubt in my my mind says all you got to do if you don't have any memories of what he's done hold on he's about the business to make it happen if you have not had experiences that you can flash back on just go to the word those that doubt he is the only way to heaven Look at John 14 and 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you're doubting that he can solve your financial or career situation, look at Philippians 4 and 19. But my God shall supply all of my needs according not to man but to his riches in heaven. For those who doubt that he can provide with the ability to carry out his call in your life. Remember Philippians 4 and 13, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For those who doubt that he can provide you with the ability to carry out his call in your life. He knows that he is the strength if you doubt that he is present with you. John 14 and 18, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he says that I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. If you are doubting and you've got a question if God cares, Romans 8 and 28, for we know that all 
things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. For those who are doubting his return and with the craziness that's happening in the world, I don't know if you have any type of biblical sense at all. You ought to know that he's preparing for his comeback. There are wars and rumors of wars. I got journalists being decapitated. We got airstrikes. We got stuff that is happening all over the world, let alone in your backyard. If you are concerned about his return, go to John 14 and 3. And if I go, he says, I will prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself so that where I am, you will be also. If you have doubts about being saved, about being converted, remember John 1, John 5 and 13, these things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you emphatically have eternal life and that you might believe on the name of the Son of God. And for whatever doubt you might be facing, there is a simple answer. Look to Jesus. Standing in the shadow of doubt, you can't stand if you don't know where to turn. You can't stand when you don't know where to kneel. Oh, I hope somebody got that. You can't stand until you get on your knees. Say, Lord, show me. Lord, help me. Lord, bless me. Lord, anoint me. Say yes. And number one, standing in the shadow of doubts. There is a common reality of doubt. Number two, there is a correct reaction to the doubt. And finally, the text gives us point number three. The counsel regarding a doubt. Check out verse six. The text gives us the conclusion of the matter. And he says, and blessed is he. <laughs> Whosoever shall not be offended in me. What's he saying, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked. He was saying, don't be offended because I have not conformed to the popular messianic expectations. Don't be offended because I have not come and destroyed our enemies. Don't be offended because I haven't come with an army to take back Israel's power over the land and the people. Don't be offended because I have not come to kill, steal, and destroy. Check it how he started the verse. But you are blessed. If you understand, but my works speak for me. You're blessed when you know that the king of kings can give blind, they're blind, they're sight. You're blessed when you know that the king of kings can empower the lame to walk cure the leopard, allow the deaf to hear, raise the dead and preach the good news to the poor. You are blessed if you know that your circumstances that I have allowed have not come to destroy you, but have come to develop you. You are blessed that I might come into your life that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You might be going through something, but I've never Never left you and I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Now Jesus did not chastise John for his question but he did give him some advice about his mindset. He said and blessed is he who else whosoever shall not be offended. We may encounter a doubtful thought every now and then but we must react to it swiftly. I just want to put you on notice. We must look to Jesus and all that he has done. I'm putting you on notice because doubt is like cancer. It starts out small and then it grows and spreads and before you know it, you are in a bad spiritual place. You may have doubts today and be completely away from God next week. That is how fast doubt can spread. You need to understand that your mind is filled with doubt. Chances are that you will stop praying, stop 
studying, stop laboring, stop attending church. Doubt is a slippery slope that leads to heartache and it leads to sin. But hold on, help is on the way. When you doubt, just stand on his promises. When you doubt, just keep on believing. You may be here standing in the shadow of doubt this morning. Your mind is filled with, with all types of unanswered questions. You feel all alone. The answer is simple. Do what John the Baptist did. Turn to Jesus. Did John recover from a moment of doubt? Absolutely. He was so secure in Jesus that he soon lost his life because of the cause of Jesus. Standing in the shadow of doubt. I've got to leave you alone. A Christian man was battling with the devil who was trying to get control of his mind, his will, and his soul. He was wreaked with havoc and had almost lost his life. And the devil was hoping that there was still some shadow of doubt in the man's mind. The man said that the devil was tempting him and he tried to answer him. But I found out, said the man, that that old devil was an old lawyer and understood the law a great deal better than I did. So I gave up, would not argue with him anymore. And I said to him, oh devil, why are you troubling me? The devil looked at him and said, well, I'm troubling you because I want your soul. He said, oh, you want my soul? Well, that is no longer my business. I have given my soul over into the hands of a new representative. His name is Jesus Christ. I've transferred everything over to him. So if you want to seek my soul, talk to my advocate. I've got Jesus and he's enough. Say yes. Say yes. When you have doubt, seek Jesus. Seek him out. Get the word. Surround yourself with people that know the word. Let them pray for you. You pray with them and God will lift you up. Do I have a witness? Your advocate, Jesus, will restore your joy, renew your strength, put more pep in your praise. You'll start singing a new song. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. The solid rock I stand. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Stand on your feet. Uh. Somebody came this morning doubting that God can get you out of whatever you're going through. Oh, be honest. Do I have a witness? If nothing else, you came questioning, Lord, why am I going through this? Whew. Imagine John in prison, hearing about Jesus' miraculous acts. Can, can, can you imagine, Maxwell? Is this the Jesus <laughs> that I'm preaching, talking? spreading the good news about and if it's him why am i still here the bible says it. john chooses the moment to witness in the prison lord have mercy y'all missed that god might have you where you are that you might be a witness to somebody where you are oh hallelujah go ahead and praise him bottom line, stand. And God will bless you. Is there one you can make me that is outside of your Because I know too much about that him. doesn't know Jesus for you himself. You can make me doubt him Come on down in here. my heart. If you can make me doubt him. You can make me doubt him. You can make me doubt him in my heart. You can't 